So much of this is the, is the human feel, the sense that we have as, as our ISAF commanders uh, continue to interact with, uh, with the uh, ANSF elements. And, and as you might imagine, it's, it's different in different places. We've had some uh, success in some areas, uh, but we've had less success in, in others. Uh, where we have found that the CANDAC and brigade commanders are competent, uh, where they are not corrupt, uh, what we find is that uh, from that echelon of command down, uh, we can get some pretty good battlefield performance out of them. And that should be a surprise to no one. Uh, where we uh, find that uh, either there is an absence of competence or there could even, in fact, be corruption, uh, that has a tendency to chill uh, all of the echelons below it, so whether it's at the CANDAC or the TOLE level or the, uh, down at the, at the foot soldier level. Uh, and that varies from place to place. Uh, I was down in Kandahar recently with General Huggins, who was the commander of the great 82nd uh, Airborne Division, and his relationship with the 205th Corps commander is extraordinarily good. Uh, and it starts with him, and his leadership is, uh, is very strong. Uh, he holds his uh, brigade commanders uh, to a high standard of performance uh, and, in fact, has said to General Huggins on 1 July, I got it. You know, we're we're going to be working together, but I got it. I'm going to take charge of this battle space. I mean, that's, that's exactly the kind of, of uh, enthusiasm. Uh, that's exactly the kind of assertiveness that we need to see uh, out of the ANSF. Uh, the uh, units, Task Force Hellman, Task Force Leatherneck in RC Southwest, uh, they began uh, pretty extensive partnered operations, although, as you pointed out correctly, partnered operations are occurring across Afghanistan. They began partnered operations uh, last year uh, extensively. Uh, and it was from them that I picked up the terms. They're better than we thought they would be uh, because in partnership they were uh, enthusiastic about the mission. Uh, they were aggressive in execution but they also turned out to be better than they thought they would be, and that played out at the CANDAC and brigade level as they became more competent in planning operations. Uh, you know, there is the sense that the Afghan is not a reluctant soldier, and he is not a reluctant soldier. In fact, the Afghans are some of the greatest individual fighters uh, going, frankly, from their history and from their recent experience. But what makes the difference between uh, one army to the, to the next is, is not necessarily the ferocity of the individual fighter. And that, of course, does play out in important places and important ways. It's how well the planning uh, can ultimately go forward. And a commander who is able to lead a coherent planning uh, program, pl planning effort, uh, to bring his staff together, uh, to go through the, the process of anticipating planning uh, and executing an operation. Uh, that is the commander who is the commander of the future. And, uh, and as you pointed out, it's about 89% of our operations now are partnered, and about 40% of those operations uh, are Afghan-led. And when they're Afghan-led, uh, although we may uh, offer our advice, um, sometimes it's very strong advice with respect to the trajectory of the planning, the development of the plan itself, and ultim ultimately the execution of the plan, uh, they are doing it in about 40% of those operations. And increasingly, those operations are occurring in RC East, which is really important because it is there where we have to build, excuse me, both the strong partnership uh, and the, uh, the willingness of the Afghans to lead because it's going to be there where the, the fight will probably be the longest in this insurgency and will be the most complicated.